75 people are out again searching for any sign of Brian Laundry in the Carlton Reserve tonight. Search crews are using swamp buggies and drones to look in remote swamp areas. The terrain, heat and bugs making it very challenging. Laundry is a person of interest in his fiance's homicide. Gabby Petito's body was found Sunday in Grand Teton National Park. Tonight, there are questions about the legal consequences for Brian's parents. They waited several days before telling police about his disappearance. NBC2 Samantha Servan is live at a growing memorial for Gabby at City Hall. Well, police escorted the laundries away from their home this morning, and no one knows where they went. But if Brian's parents helped him get away or destroy any evidence, there's a chance they could face prison time. Emotional goodbyes, beautiful pictures, flickering flames, all stand at a memorial for 22-year-old Gabby Petito outside of Northport City Hall. People from all over coming to pay their respects. She just left her unicorn over there for her. Her favorite unicorn, she said. This memorial growing as search parties are on the hunt for Brian Laundrie, who disappeared more than a week ago. The question is, did Brian's parents help him get away? But if they knew what happened and they intended to protect their son from detection in some way, whether they're helping him escape or or hiding him, then yes, they can be arrested as an accessory after the fact. Pamela C from FGCU says when it comes to possible murder, there is no parent child privilege in court. While the laundries have the right to remain silent, they do not have the right to hide their son. If these parents have protected their son inappropriately, they could look at anywhere from five to 15 years of prison or probation. Holly Madison says she's glued to this case. And if it were her child? If it was one of my kids, they, I would have brought them to the police station myself. Madison is a mother of five. She agrees with this note left at the base of the tree, which reads, we will not rest until we get justice for you. Just turn yourself in. Just, there's no point. You're going to be found, but they're not going to give up. We're still look, working to learn where the laundries went today. We do know the silver Ford Mustang taken Monday during the FBI search warrant was processed for evidence and returned to the laundry home today. Live in Northport, Samantha Serban, NBC2. This kind of search is incredibly expensive. NBC2 reached out to the Sarasota County Sheriff's Office to see how much it's costing you as taxpayers. They don't know yet since they haven't added up all the hours and the overtime, but the Peace River Canine Rescue, a nonprofit that has helped with searches like this, estimates this effort has already cost between $500,000 to a million dollars. Northport police have not determined if they'll be back out there tomorrow. The city of Moab, Utah, is launching an investigation into the police department's handling of the dispute between Petito and Laundrie in the days before she disappeared. The investigation stems from the police interaction with the couple you see here on August 12th. Someone called 911 after seeing them fight. The caller said Laundrie slapped Petito. Well, officers talked to both and ended up separating the couple for the night. Neither was charged. Officials launched an investigation but said they have no reason to believe police officers violated policy. Tonight we're learning about another scene between Gabby and Brian at a Wyoming restaurant just days before she disappeared. A couple said that they caused a commotion at the Mary Piglet's restaurant August 27th. Gabby was in tears. Brian was visibly angry. A waitress says she was even shaken about what was she was seeing. No one reported seeing physical violence between the couple, but the restaurant posted this on Instagram confirming that a server spotted Gabby and Brian and has spoken to the FBI about it. This Saturday, there will be a butterfly release in remembrance of Gabby in Northport. It will be at City Hall Saturday at 7 p.m. if you'd like to go. If you want to read more about what witnesses say happened in the days leading up to Gabby's disappearance, you can head to the NBC2 News app and website. Our digital team is updating new information up to the minute as soon as it comes into our newsroom.